Certain fragrances have a tendency to leave a lasting impression. Some fragrances will just leave a mark on people when they smell it, whether it be because it's the first time they smell it and they just find it so interesting, or maybe it sparked a conversation with them and they won't forget that conversation because now they wanna seek out that particular fragrance because they found it such a great smell that they needed to know more. There's a lot of fragrances out there that have that ability. And in this video, I'm bringing you the eight fragrances in particular that seem to do that for me that I've had multiple conversations with random people and loved ones about these fragrances because they're just so interesting when the first time they smell them. So we're gonna start things off with what I'm wearing today, the fragrance that sparked this video idea. So let's get into it. Like I said, we're starting with what I wore today, which is Mancera Cetrapoise, which is currently on my skin. Um, the thing that I find so special about this one is based on ladies around me that I've had conversations with about this fragrance, it's much more of a sexy, alluring scent than I ever originally gave it credit for. Guys around me that I've had conversations with about this want to know where can they get it and for how much because it just smells so damn good. And then for me personally, I just deem it to be so outrageously versatile. It's, it's always a great time to wear this. T-shirt on up to a black tie event. I mean, there's never a bad situation to have on Men's Harris or Grapoise. I've had countless conversations from the decant I used to have, the 10ml that I went through, to the juice level that has started to drop on this four ounce bottle because I always go back to this one and I always recommend this one because it's just so good. And for one reason or another, for different reasons, people seem to really enjoy this fragrance. I can tell you firsthand that smelling it on me has captivated a few people to the point of purchasing the fragrance just off that one time they happened to smell it on me and we had a conversation about it. So. A lot of people really enjoy this one here in the community and for good reason. It's a very popular fragrance. It's known to be a great alternative to Aventus. Even though it doesn't smell like Aventus, it can do a very similar job. Honestly, I think the versatility is far past what Aventus is even capable of, in my opinion. And I deem it a better overall fragrance, especially for the money, because you can get this so much cheaper. It's just phenomenal. It never ceases to amaze me with how the, the feelings it evokes for people around me. So if you've yet to get your nose on this, it's worth getting your hands on it, at least the decant, so you can spend a little time with it and see if it's full bottle worthy for you. But one that definitely always seems to leave a lasting impression it's a drap blase. For as good as Spice Bomb Extreme is, as well as some of the other flankers in the line, the original Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf, I've had more conversations with people about this when wearing this than any of the others. Do I get multiple compliments when I wear the other ones? Yes, they definitely have that ability. Spice Bomb Extreme, Night Vision EDP, Infrared, they're wonderful fragrances. They do those types of things. They're very alluring and attractive, but the original, it's just something about it. It's just something about it. For as mass appealing as it is for being so spicy, it really speaks to a lot of people. This one is known to start a conversation for me. What are you wearing? Ooh, that smells great. Really? That's what it's called? I've heard of that. That's what it smells like? It's just something about Spice Bomb, especially when you wear it in a day-to-day -day work setting. Great for evenings out, don't get me wrong, it has that seductive appeal because it's so spicy. But it's something about it during the day with a nice Oxford in a work setting where you can have a fragrance that's a little bit stronger than your typical work fragrance. Something like Spice Bomb, you're gonna have multiple conversations more than likely because in an office climate controlled environment with a well circulated room, people are gonna smell you pretty easily and you're not gonna smell like your typical 
office style scent that's inoffensive and more subdued because this projects pretty well. This will grab people. This will captivate those that aren't really big into fragrances and may have never heard of Spice Bomb or may have never smelled Spice Bomb before. I, like I said, I've had more conversations about what I'm wearing with the original than probably all of the flankers combined. I mean, I'd have to really think back to create a tally, but I'm sure it's close because I don't know, it's just something so alluring and intriguing about a fragrance that is just smells like a spice rack damn near you know there's a touch of sweetness there's a little bit of freshness but it's mostly just an amalgamation of smelling like a spice rack that's interesting might be a little much for some people's noses don't get me wrong but it seems to leave an impression every time not every time i wear it that's not fair to say but more times than not that seems to be the case with Spice Bomb. Um, not too many people talk about it anymore because Spice Bomb Extreme is just so good, and I understand that, but I have to give Spice Bomb its due because it does the job for this video topic, in my experience, much better than Spice Bomb Extreme. It definitely leaves a lasting impression on those around you. It's Victor and Rolf, the original Spice Bomb. So this is a showstopper. This is one that... I don't know, it's just something about it when it comes to incense, oud, and spices. I, I don't think there's a better one out there for me personally, that being Epic Man from Amouage. This is a stunner. This definitely leaves a lasting impression on people. For Thanksgiving this past year, it was either Thanksgiving or Christmas, I forgot which holiday, I want to say Thanksgiving. This is what I wore to my in-laws and my fragrance was the topic of conversation for a solid 30 minutes with a few different people at, at the event. It's one of those fragrances that's, for being a Middle Eastern vibe, that's incense oud, you know, smoky oud fragrance, it's much more easier on the senses, not a super challenging wear, and off skin, especially off of my skin, it's got an intoxicating quality to it. It really does. This is very attractive on my skin to me personally and based on what has been said to me when wearing this. I haven't spent a ton of time with it. I've only worn it a few times. I had a decant in the past before I got a bottle and every time I've worn it, every time, because it's only been a handful of times that I've worn this, every time I've had a conversation about my fragrance I was wearing because it's not your run of the mill, everyday mass appealing synthetic crowd pleaser, but it's still pleasing yet intriguing pleasing yet interesting it's different not everybody smells something like epic man every day like i said incense oud spices it's an interesting combination it's one that speaks to me personally makes for such a stunning aroma in my opinion and the performance is not too overwhelming if you're mindful of the sprays to where it leaves room for discoverability and that's the best part about someone finding your fragrances when it doesn't overwhelm them and they get a faint hint of the aroma and it intrigues them to the point of asking. That's the biggest thing. Asking, because they don't always necessarily know it's you if there's a few people around. Who smells like that? Ooh, what's that smell? That's the beginning of, for what a fragrance lover would deem a great conversation. Because if you're really into fragrances, you want to have that conversation. You want somebody to ask what you're wearing and be intrigued by it so you can have a conversation about it because that's one of the beauties of wearing such an expensive fragrance like an Amouage Epic Man. In my experience so far, until further notice, it definitely leaves a lasting impression because I've had a conversation about what I'm wearing every single time I've worn this so far. Definitely get a sample and try it. I mean, it's, it's great. It's been around for years, but it's great. Amouage Epic Man. In a line that's immensely popular, yet not so run-of-the-mill, synthetic, and mass appealing, this has a much more interesting vibe. It's something about when you add spices, a heavy dose of spices, it tends to make for an interesting fragrance. With your Sauvage Elixir, dry, woody spice up top, nutmeg, cinnamon, cardamom, stuff like that, with a lovely dose of lavender. To keep it bright, give it a little bit of a soapy backbone. There's a little hit of the DNA of the original Sauvage, but if you weren't a fan of the original Sauvage, the EDP or any of the other flankers, the Cool Spray, anything like that, you might like this one. 
you really could because it's not the same fragrance it's got an ode to the dna like i said you can pick it up in there it does smell to me like it still belongs in the sauvage line but this is sauvage's big brother this is sauvage's daddy this fragrance has the type of performance that sticks to your skin like glue is pretty strong in the first hour hour and a half even two hours it's strong it's really really strong pumping off the skin but after that it maintains a very consistent scent bubble projection slash sillage and scent trail it's got a dense trail this is one that when you walk by somebody based on my experience and it's not every single time i've worn it but it's pretty much every it's just about every time you're going to end up having a conversation this stuff is, it smells different not everybody has smelled this because the masses have been trained to smell the synthetic fresh fragrance, okay? This is not your typical synthetic fresh fragrance. When you get a whiff of this, when you get a hit of this one when somebody walks by, it's a, ooh, that smells nice. That's been my experience so far. Do I, Like I said, do I have a conversation every time I wear it with somebody? No, but I've had more than I ever thought I would based on the limited number of times I've worn this. I've worn this fragrance less than 10 times. And I would say, let's call it eight wares off the top of my head. In five of them, I've probably had a conversation with someone about what I'm wearing. Because as soon as you tell them it's a Sauvage fragrance, if they've ever heard of Sauvage, they, that's Sauvage? No. And then you have to explain to them the difference. Because most people have heard of Sauvage at this stage because it's so immensely popular. They probably know somebody that wears it if they don't wear it themselves. It doesn't seem like it fits exactly in the line, but it has a little bit of hit of the DNA like I spoke before. It's just something about it. When it comes to spicy, woody fragrances, it seems to pull a compliment. It seems to attract people. And this is so alluring that it just does the same job as... $300 fragrances with captivating and being interesting because it doesn't smell cheap. It's not cheap, but it, it is part of a designer line that overall is known to be a bit more synthetic, metallic, shower gel, run-of-the-mill, mass-appealing type of smell, and Elixir is none of those. That's what's so interesting about this one. If you're looking to leave a lasting impression when you walk by somebody, the probability is a lot higher on Sauvage Elixir than any of the other Sauvages based on my experience. And I do have all but the cool spray. Do the others pull compliments? Sure. But not to the level of wanting to know more outside of telling me I smell good. Wanting to know more? That's definitely Sauvage Elixir. A fragrance so well-rounded, so smooth, yet so deep at the same time. It's got a purity, a class, and elegance that's not too serious. It can be dressed up, dressed down, but more so dressed up because it has that elegance and appeal to it. I would say that Triumph of Bacchus from Argos definitely leaves a lasting impression. This is more of a special occasion scent for me and based on my personal experience, it does just that. This is one that has that wow factor. This will turn ahead. This sparks conversation. With everyone, not necessarily, but the probability is pretty high. I can't recall going out in public with this one because it's very strategic when I'm going to wear it. It's not just going to the grocery store and my wearing Triumph of Bacchus. It's more of a slightly dressier occasion, special event, dinner, somebody's birthday, or a holiday that I'm pulling this bad boy out in the cooler weather. And when you get that hug, when you meet up with whoever you're going to meet up with, it's every time. It's instantaneous. Oh my God, you smell so good. What are you wearing? And then the conversation begins. And then the next time you see them, you're wearing something different this time. What, what were you wearing last time that smelled so good? This happened to me the last time I wore this fragrance. That's why it was easy to put it in this video topic. It will leave a lasting impression because it's so intoxicating and different. If you like boozy, the rum here is just so, like I said, intoxicating. It's, it's, I keep using that word in this video because it's so fitting to these fragrances. That's why they're here for this topic. There's a lovely apple peach medley up top, this juicy fruity smell with the rum it starts to dry into this smooth sweet tobacco there's some woods here there's a little touch of spices 
but it's mostly about the fruits, the rum, and the tobacco. That's the stars of the show here. And it's one that if you leave room to be, desi to be discovered, the desirability is a little bit better because you don't want it to punch somebody in the face when you go in for that hug. You don't want it to overwhelm them to where you get the opposite reaction of instead of, oh, you smell so good to, oof, that's strong. That has happened to me before as well. And this fragrance is potent enough to do that if you spray too much. If you know you're gonna be in a closer encounter situation, leave room to be discovered. Maybe only do four or five sprays. Maybe don't do eight or 10 sprays because something like this, that's a lot. Especially if you're gonna be in close quarters with somebody within a few feet of them. You don't want it to be intrusive and overwhelm someone you want it to lightly hit them in the nostrils and intrigue them and let it be enjoyable for those around you as well as yourself because at the end of the day you're wearing it for yourself but you have to keep others in mind because when you're wearing a fragrance like this it's usually a special occasion in my experience and more times than not i'm gonna have a conversation about what i'm wearing because i smell so good and somebody's gonna want to tell me I smell so good. So get yourself a carded sample. If you've yet to try this one, it's definitely full bottle worthy in my opinion. It's a stunner. It's Argos Triumphal Bacchus. Benzoin, so well done. It's got a boozy, intoxicating smell. Amber vanilla benzoin. Such a stunning combination. Quality to the nines. This is one of my favorite evening wear scents. My wife specifically melts over the smell of this fragrance on me. Nishane Ani. I've raved about this fragrance over the last year, and for good reason. It's absolutely phenomenal. My favorite vanilla fragrance. My wife's favorite vanilla fragrance on me. This is intoxicating. I usually bring this one when we take our little one or two night getaways to the casino. This usually makes the trip. This is us going out and gambling. This is us having some drinks, having a nice dinner, and then capping off the evening and having a wonderful evening together. This fragrance has been involved in a lot of evenings like that. And for that reason, it seems to be, it's really tied itself to those special nights where we're going, we're dressing up a bit and we're going to do our thing. Uh, this is just such a lovely fragrance. I haven't had too many experiences with others that leave a lasting impression, but it's with my wife specifically. This has left a lasting impression for her because this is, in her words, one of the sexiest smelling fragrances she's ever smelled. She loves when I wear this. It's gotten to the point to where it's essential for our getaways. When we get away, this bottle has to be packed and I have to wear it at least one time while we're gone because it just does it for her. This is a sexy fragrance. It's super alluring and intoxicating. This is a very attractive vanilla that more people need to try. Like I said, I've raved about this one many, many times. In the future, do I think it will have that situation where it sparks conversation with passersby, strangers, friends and family? Sure. But I seem to wear it in these situations where it's mainly just me and my wife and we're not going to be in close proximity to others for the most part throughout the day when i'm wearing this so it's kind of mainly just for me and her so far with the wearings i've done with it so i know it may be interesting that i put it in this video but based on the experiences i have with it it still fits this because it's left a serious impression on my significant other specifically so get yourself a sample and try this one performance is great it's one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled in my life. It's just that good, guys. Give this one a try. Nishane Ani. At least a handful of times, I've had random conversations with strangers that have stopped in their tracks to ask me what I was wearing or stop me as I pass by to ask me what I'm wearing because this is intoxication from a scent profile at its finest. It really is. This is a must try. This is the highlight of the house in my opinion. This is the most interesting fragrance. It's almost mind blowing in a sense with Zaharoff's signature rose. This stuff is crazy good. There's Turkish rose for a fresh rose smell. There's Bulgarian rose for a slightly more deep and jammy type of rose, there's this specific incense, Olibanum Tears, that adds this deep, rich, smoky nuance. It's a rose incense smell. There's some sweetness. There's some warm wood oud here. There's a couple different things going on. This is one that, for me and for my wife, 
is remarkable. We can't stop smelling each other. My wife has her own bottle. She wears it at least half the week, every week. So I get to constantly smell this one on a regular basis, whether I'm wearing it or not. And like I said, in grocery stores, I've had a random, most recently, not most recently, but the one that's most notable in recent memory was at Kroger. This late, I was looking at the ready-made, pre-made meals in the cooler, and I could see this lady pass by me in my peripheral. Stop, take a couple of steps back, a couple of steps back to let me know that she can smell me. What are you wearing? That smells so good and so different. Another one of those opportunities to have a conversation about the fragrance you're wearing because while some guys don't want to wear rose, I understand that. Some guys don't like florals, especially rose. This is a masculine rose. If there's such a thing, this is it. Because of that smokiness of the incense, that deep, rich warmth, that's there with the woods. This fragrance is that one. My buddy Justin, we actually got asked in a live, what's a great date fragrance from Zaharoff? And I, the safer bet would be noir. It's geared towards the night and everything. And Justin had the best response to the question and a rebuttal to my answer when he said noir if it's a first date because it's a safer play. Rosé if it's somebody that you're with because it's just something about it. It's so much more intoxicating and sexy than the rest. And I think that was very well put because I couldn't agree more. This is a stunning fragrance. It turns heads, it draws people in, it does pull compliments, and it works for both genders perfectly. Completely unisex, believe it or not, leans a little bit more masculine for being a rose-dominated fragrance, and this is a must-try from the house. Absolute must try from the house. Get yourself a sample. There's always a link in my link tree. Zaharoff Signature Rosé. Last is one of the most interesting fragrances I've ever smelled. I don't wear it all the time. I'm very strategic. But most of the time when I have worn it, I have had a conversation with someone. Most recently my wife because it seems to intrigue and blow her mind every time she smells it because she at first doesn't really know how to feel about it. But she knows she really likes it. But her, her exact words is it's just so different. That being Raja Parfum's Burlington 1819. One of the most complex fragrances I own. This is wow factor. This is conversation starting. This is depth. This has so much depth to it and richness. And a kind of a intoxicating pheromone appeal because I typically don't like darker, more animalic, musky fragrances. And on my skin, as this dries, it gets borderline body odor type of animalic musk. And it's just something so just great about it. I don't know how else to put it besides using the word great because it's citrus peel, fresh orange up top with this warm rum, dries into some more dense woods and that animalic musk. There's a bunch of other notes here, but this is the main accords and notes that I get from it throughout. It changes constantly. It seems like every time I go back to it to smell it or get a random whiff when I turn a certain way or move a certain way, I get something different from it because it's just so complex. There's such a crazy amount of notes here and so many layers to peel back to this fragrance. And the performance doesn't leave anything to be desired. It's heavy at first, then very consistent and closer to the skin with a nice strong trail for hours and hours and hours into the life of the fragrance and it smells like nothing else. I have had a small handful of conversations with random people two or three times with this fragrance because it's just so different. It's not really pushing, it's not super easy for somebody to smell me a few hours into the wearing. You gotta walk relatively close by someone but the trail will linger for a little bit and I've had situations where it's, oh I like that, what is that, what are you wearing? That happens. It does happen. And with stuff that's just so randomly interesting and different, like Burlington 1819, the probability is definitely a bit more up there than your average run-of-the-mill mass appealing fragrance. Don't get me wrong. People are going to tell you you smell good when you, when you wear these crowd pleasers. But when you wear something that doesn't smell challenging, and when I say challenging, like some people could think it maybe stinks, not saying there aren't people out there that don't feel that way about fragrances like this, 
but it's a smaller number of people that will feel that way overall. This is just so different. It really can spark conversation because more times than not, including myself, people haven't smelled anything like this before. So when they do get a hit of it, they're going to want to ask about it, more than likely anyways. One of the more alluring, intoxicating, lasting impressions definitely comes from fragrances like Burlington 1819. Interesting video topic, a little tangential, but I really wanted to explain where I'm coming from with each pick in particular because they each have done sparked conversation and done different things in my daily life when wearing them, whether with my significant other, with friends and family, with random people. It just, you never know what's going to happen at any given time and it's noteworthy when certain conversations get had about certain fragrances that ties in your memory to that fragrance for you and the other person, hence the reason it leaves a lasting impression. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. Have you tried any of these? Do you own any of these eight fragrances? I'm very curious to know if you've had any experiences like that. I'd love to read about it in the comments. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these and give them a spray now, you might end up having a similar experience. You might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.